shopping. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, it's 2 o'clock, so I believe we're ready to begin. My name is Rob Altamont, VP of Marketing for Herico. I'll be your moderator for today's webinar titled The Basics of Feral Installation. The webinar will be led by Herico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. We say a few words about Jeff. Jeff's worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making, and Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. Let me get a few housekeeping items out of the way first. Your audio settings are muted, which means we cannot hear you. And if you have any questions, use the question box located in the upper right-hand corner of your dashboard. If for any reason you must leave your webinar, leave this webinar. Don't worry. It's being recorded and will be on youtube.com slash hericogolf and on our blog in about one hour. So I think that's about it for me, and I'll turn it over to Harico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Thank you, Rob, and thank everyone for attending today. In our last webinar, we discussed how to properly abrade the tips of both steel and graphite shafts with numerous tools and techniques. Now we're on to our next step in the assembly process, which is ferrule installation. Before we get to that point, I want to first go over what the purpose of the ferrule and such things as the anatomy and the different styles that you'll encounter in club making and repair. Ferrules are simply those plastic trim pieces located just above the hosel on the club head. The main purpose is to provide a nice smooth transition from the hosel to the shaft. The majority of the ferrules you'll encounter will be black in color and they may have one or maybe more uh, trim rings in their upper or even the lower end to provide a nice cosmetic element to the golf club. Now, not all clubs will require ferrules, but most do today. If the club's hosel has a rounded edge, like most putters do, the club head will not require the use of a ferrule. However, if the top of the hosel is flat with a square top edge, the club head has been designed to be assembled with a ferrule. Ferrules are designed to be undersized related to the inside diameter. That is, a ferrule that's designed to fit a 370 parallel tip shaft will actually be intentionally manufactured with a .368 inside diameter. This requires force fitting the ferrule onto the shaft in order to reduce the likelihood the ferrule could slide up and down the shaft at a later date. This is one reason those new to club making find the procedure tedious because they assume that the ferrule should slide easily up on the shaft tip. For many years, the outside diameter of the ferrule was typically larger than the average hosel. This requires the club, maker to, the club maker to turn down or sand the ferrule flush with the outside diameter of the hosel to provide a nice smooth transition. Many club makers find turning ferrules takes up valuable time or they simply don't have the right equipment to do so. And to eliminate the need for sanding the ferrules, it's useful to have an appropriate size ferrule. In the case where the ferrule is undersized or the base or the bottom part of the ferrule is smaller than the outside diameter of the hosel, this shows poor workmanship. The best scenario is to find a ferrule that fits almost precisely. You have to realize there are tolerances with the outside diameter of the hosels, as they're often hand polished during the fin or finishing phases and will not match outside diameter for outside diameter each and every time. This is the reason why turning down the ferrule is the most acceptable method. At, Her at Herico, we actually made your work easier providing different size wood ferrules. Plus, we've standardized our hosel diameters with respect to product category. That is, all our iron, hybrid, and, and wedge hosels are designed to be 13.6 millimeters or 0.535 inch outside diameter. On our stainless steel woods, the diameters are 12.2 millimeters or 0.48 inches. And lastly, for our titanium drivers, the diameters are 12.7 millimeters or 0.500 inches. 
This is why we offer two different size wood ferrules. Otherwise, it would require you to remove 20 thousandths of an inch from the base of the ferrule to match the stainless steel uh, fairway woods. Now, the only exceptions are the tour gear irons, which are die cast out of zinc and require a larger hosel for strength. In that case, we have a specific ferrule available for just for that iron. Plus, that ferrule works well on older style irons that you may be trying to reshaft with, with larger hosel ODs. Another example is with our Dynacraft Profit ICT fairway woods. These use the same ICT adapter sleeve that's used in the driver. So you'd elect to use the, the ferrule design for the titanium drivers rather than the fairways. This is why it's helpful to be able to measure the outside diameter of the hosel accurately with calipers, especially with a club or a brand you may not be familiar with. We'll also talk about these adapter sleeves later, too. Now, when selecting which ferrules to use, the requirement is to choose the type that's not only designed to fit the diameter of the shaft being used, but to suit the design of the club, has, the club as well. It's customary to select the length of the ferrule based on the length of the hosel. For example, a short ferrule looks more appropriate on a shorter hosel, while a long ferrule is better suited to a more traditional long hosel golf club. So let's go over each type of ferrule that you may encounter. The first one is the standard iron ferrule. These can also be used for hybrids and wedges, and will range in height from an eighth inch uh, to uh, about an inch and a quarter tall, with the shorter ferrules being the most popular. As mentioned before, the inside diameter is slightly smaller by two thousandths of an inch than a typical 370 iron shaft. This allows some tolerance when abrading the shaft, so the likelihood that there's going to be a forced fit to prevent the ferrule from sliding up and down the shaft. Now, iron ferrules are available to fit both taper and parallel tip shafts, but I find you really don't need specific tapered ferrules. Since the taper tipped iron becomes larger in diameter as we move up the shaft, by the time it's pushed up above where the hosel is, a standard 370 iron shaft fits tightly, at least if you get ferrules that are at least a half inch long. Now, metal wood ferrules are Metal wood ferrules are a narrower diameter versions of their iron counterparts, typically ranging from an eighth inch tall to three quarters of an inch in length. Metal wood ferrules are available in 335 inside diameter, and some are available to fit 350 tip shafts. Most metal wood ferrules are designed to fit titanium drivers and then sanded to fit flush, which we'll get into later, to the smaller diameter stainless steel fairway woods. Remember, Harico offers both matching ferrules to fit precisely with each type of club head. Now, collared ferrules feature a lip or a flange uh, that's located uh, below the base or the bottom, and that will fit down inside the countersunk or beveled area um, in the top of the club's hosel. The theory behind collared ferrules is this will help reduce the stress on a graphite uh, shaft um, when it's in use. The fact is, if a hosel is properly countersunk, or countersunk, any type of standard metal wood or iron ferrule is perfectly acceptable. Now, if you elect to use a collared ferrule, expect to do some additional countersinking on the heads. You see, the ferrules are precision pieces but the countersunking done by the foundry is not. So don't expect the lip of the, the countersunk ferrule to fit and have the base of the ferrule seat flush with the hosel each and every time. For this reason, I'm not an advocate for using them in any of my assemblies just because it requires extra work with no additional benefits. Now, counterboard ferrules are slightly different from a collared ferrule. Instead of a 20-degree angle that's produced from a standard countersinking to reduce the stress at the top of the hosel, some manufacturers elect to create a recessed section for at least the first quarter inch or so of the inside diameter of the hosel. Now, a special ferrule with a pronounced lip or step 
will seat down inside this recess, recessed session of the hosel, and this helps eliminate stress at the top of the hosel. I remember this used to be quite common to see junior components offered this way by using the combination counterbore hosel and 